what percent of you, when you're looking up at the stars and wondering about this stuff, thinks that panspermia has is what happened on Mars or or on Earth, which is the building blocks of life came from elsewhere. Well, but uh, you know that's the thing. Panspermia is a vector, potential vector, which means that it actually distributes the stuff of life left and right, but it doesn't explain the origin of life. Right. It does. It's not the environment itself. It just promotes maybe, and we still have to prove this. But what we know is that the stuff we are made of is very abundant all over the place, including in interstellar uh, medium. So it's all over. It's all over. The idea is that maybe it just waits to have the proper environment. And we know what it needs here on Earth. It needs water. It needs energy, shelter, uh, and nutrients. So you're fundamentally interested in the origin of life and the big leaps that in evolutionary history that could be like an origin of something, origin of eukaryotes, origin of photosynthesis, origin of whatever. I just think if we're a civilization here on Earth and we survive another few hundred years, I think it would be a good idea to take a big gun and just shoot life out there, like a life gun basically try to create panspermia, that's a good backup solution. So one way is to actually uh, copy our brains and actual humans, some complex information and send it out there. Another way to preserve life is just to like, send the basic building blocks, send a bunch of bacteria, a bunch of uh, whatever the rugged organisms are on earth, just send a bunch of those. These are not the building blocks, they, they, they are actual organism. So right. what, what- Isn't that a nice shortcut? Or, or do we wanna, because you said building blocks are everywhere. Yeah, the bricks of life, the carbon, hydrogen, et cetera, uh, they, they were uh, produced by the death of previous stars. Yeah. So this is how they were produced. And um, stars like our sun uh, started to form 10 billion years ago. Uh, that doesn't mean that the the sun is the only kind of star that produce you know uh, life or enables life, but actually was produced in uh, ten billion years ago. Now, what you're talking about is is a little different. Uh, right now, there are many um, many efforts to do the type of thing you are uh, talking about, which is to put our DNA on whatever kind of substrate and preserve it in vaults, either in different places on Earth or on the moon. Some people are already thinking about putting DNA on, on the moon. As far as brain's concerned, and it's drawing towards transhumanism, which is um, the enhancement uh, of who we are through AI and machine learning. Of course, having backups is a good thing. For me, I would say that taking care of our planets and going back to a place where we are in equilibrium with our environment would be also maybe the best backup possible and let evolution do its things. Right now we are like teenagers with enough brain to create cool tools, but we don't have enough brain to understand yet the consequences of what we are doing. And right now we are paying for this. So uh, the question is whether we are going to be able to move forward and learn from the mistakes we are making to become a mature civilization. You probably heard of the Drake equation. That would be the L at the very end, mm -hmm. the duration. The which, duration of yeah, intelligent civilization. Exactly. And, and or at least... Uh, the length of time a civilization remains detectable. It can disappear from the radar screen, literally, for a number of reasons. The first one is destroy itself or being destroyed by uh, external uh, 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 events, or it can become so in tune and, uh, with the universe and so advanced that it disappears because it melts really in the background and it's not visible anymore. Uh, there are some wild theories out there saying that a civilization might be so advanced that you cannot distinguish them from physical processes. And uh, that was an example. It doesn't say that this is the case, but some people say, imagine that, in fact, all the dark matter that we, we see or we, we, we theorized about is, in fact, some sort of a biological uh, uh, process. So you can think about a number of things. Personally, 
I believe that what you talk about, about preserving our information, is kind of what life does. We, we need to look at ourselves uh, as not different of what the little cell that started off was. And this is what tells you not about the origin of life, but in fact, the nature of life, which is a lot more interesting to me. Because it, the, it is. the nature of life is really what is going to give you some universal signature to look for it all over the place. And not only around ponds of water uh, for life as we know it, but the nature of life is telling you that life wants to get the most information possible around its surroundings. And complexity is, in fact, the ability to gather mm -hmm. and exchange and preserve the most information possible. And, and so what you're saying is kind of preserving the kind of information we have.